Okay, good afternoon. I think it's probably about time to start. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm really amused at this screen that's in front of me that shows me my slides because I'm kind of, you know, short. <laughs> so it's been appealing to my sense of humor, the thought of peering at you over it, but I'll be fine. Um, good afternoon. My name's Karen Pauley. I am the current president of the Pearl Foundation. I'm going to do a short talk, it's 20 minutes, and I'm going to do a brief review of some of the things we've been doing in the past year and a little bit of the history of who we are. Can everybody hear me okay, I think? Okay, that's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the Pearl Foundation is a non-profit. Um, we, at the minute, we have about 50 volunteers. Um, I think we had about 50 volunteers last year. I was actually hoping during the year that we would increase the number of volunteers, but um, I suppose what happens is some volunteers leave and we get new ones. This is one of our volunteers. This is Dan Wright. He is the current treasurer of the Pearl Foundation. So one of the interesting things about running a non-profit with only volunteers is that there's an awful lot of time that people are expected to spend. So. When I say I would like to increase the number of volunteers, me currently have 50, when someone new comes to me and says, hey, I would like to join, it's actually very hard for me to work out how much time you'd need to spend. So Dan is, I've got a picture of Dan because I think his role is quite difficult. Dan is the treasurer of the Pearl Foundation. Anybody here who's involved in any sort of open source project that you're doing in your spare time, it's really good if you can set your own deadlines. But because Dan is the treasurer, he has to follow other people's deadlines. So he's got quite a difficult role, and I'm very appreciative of what he's doing. But I don't think he's here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so during the last year, our conference's chair stepped down, Josh McAdams, and we got a new one, Heath. So Heath, you've probably seen around the conference, and he is here. So the Pearl Foundation was, as I said on the first morning, it was created back in the year 2000 and it was created by a group of people who were attending IAPSI North America. So the very first thing that the Pearl Foundation was set up to do was run conferences. And at the minute we are still running IAPSI North America. So Heath and a group of volunteers decide where the new venue is going to be and try to help out the current organizers. So the goal of the Pearl Foundation is simply to support the Pearl community. And I know that in some ways, that's quite vague, but we try to support whatever projects are important to people at the time and the things that people get in touch with me about. And one of the things that we do every year is look at grants. So this is Alberto, and he runs our grants committee. And this is a picture of him last year. We were at a conference, this was YAPSI Europe in Frankfurt, which was so hot, it was hotter than this particular conference because there was no air conditioner with similar temperatures outside. So he's clinging onto that fan in the hope that he can cool down. At the minute, we have two running grants. They are brand new, so I can't tell you anything about them. They were announced on our website just in the last week. We also provide funding for some aspects of Pearl 6. And at the minute, there's an ongoing grant with Carl and one with Patrick Michaud. So we hold separate funds of money that we've raised for Pearl 6 and for Pearl 5. And we also have a general fund. So those first two grants came from our general fund. This is how much is left in the current Pearl 6 fund. Um, to be honest, that's exactly the same figure that was on my slide last year. So we haven't had any new requests for Pearl 6 grants in the past year. We may actually even have some extra money because today I just closed one of the historic Pearl 6 grants that didn't require the complete amount of funding. As well as the funding for Pearl 6, we have funding for Pearl 5. The Pearl 5 Core Maintenance Fund is our most recent fund. Um, it was set up in 2011. The first amount of money went to Nicholas Clark in August of 2011. Again, it was one of those things that we announced out of YAPSI North America. We Historically, we had got money from Booking.com so that Dave Mitchell was working on Pearl 5 bugs. And that money, of course, money runs out. It was 50,000. And then we wanted to have more of the maintainers able to work. So we raised money. And since August 2011, we have given 120,000 to Nick Clark, 
35,000 to Dave Mitchell, 10,000 to Paul Johnson, 10,000 to Jess, and a small amount to Rick so he could travel to the QA hackathon. I'm incredibly impressed that we were able to raise so much money to fund them. We are continuing to fund them currently. That fund has 95,000 or so left which is it's a good amount of money. We are expecting, I don't know if any of you follow our blog <laughs> at news.pearlfoundation.org. We have a application at the minute from Tony Cook to also work on the Pearl 5 core. And I'm expecting a new grant application from Dave Mitchell and another one from Nicholas Clark. But even when those grant applications come in, there's still gonna be some money left in this fund. When this fund, we will have to look at additional fundraising, but I'll be honest, we haven't been fundraising very hard for this fund because we don't... If I go to people and try to raise lots of money and then it sits in our bank account for a year, you know, people want to know. I mean, some of our sponsors will say to me, what exactly was my money spent on and when was it spent? So the Pearl Five uh, people I've been speaking to were concerned because there is still, this is still to me a substantial amount left for Pearl Five. but. It may well be finished by the end of this year. You can donate to the Pearl 5 Fund or any of the funds that we have on our website. We have set up recurrent donations for community members, so it's not just large sponsors like Booking.com and Craigslist who are supporting the Pearl Foundation. We also have community members who make recurrent monthly donations, which is great. This, yeah? Do you accept company matches? I believe that we do. We have only, in the past year, have one that I know of. So the companies, if your company does that, they usually send a piece of paper to Dan. And I know he has sorted out one this year. So I believe that we do. The issue with company matches is that whilst I keep talking about the Pearl Foundation, this organization was formed as yet another society. So a lot of people have come to me about their company schemes, even my own husband, who couldn't find the Pearl Foundation because we're listed as yet another society, which is our legal name. Why not the name? We have um, registered the name, the Pearl Foundation. And I mean, we trade under the Pearl Foundation. Um, Are you sending you up more applications for grants? <laughs> Talk to me later. <laughs> <laughs> In general, yes. Okay. Yes, in general, yes. I mean, there are things that people come to me that we don't have money for. We're not a huge foundation. I mean, this is a completely volunteer organization. It's made up of people from this community who none of them are professional fundraisers. But, you know, if somebody has a great idea, we really do try to work to fund it. Um, Nicholas Clark came to me, actually, in 2011. It wasn't me that came up with the Pearl Five core idea. I mean, we had funding, but I was, it was people in P5P. And we got together and we thought, how can we do this? How can we raise money? Where are we getting the money for Nicholas Clark to work, you know, for months? And because the community responded and because the companies responded, we did really well. Because people obviously want to see change there. So yeah, I'm, I'm all for good ideas and grant requests. And if we don't have the money, well, <laughs> we, we can try. So one of the things that we've done this year was to take part in the outreach program for women. So we haven't, in, we, in the past, we took part in GSOC, which I assume most people have heard of, the Google Summer of Code. And, <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's a wonderful program, but in the past year, we didn't manage to get in. In fact, this is the second year that we're not taking part. And it takes, well, yes, Chris? There was a comment made, excuse me, yesterday on the Lightning Box, where I think Yes, so Duke, he's sitting back there, sleeping. Um, he put in, he really is too. He put, <laughs> sorry, I'm so dull today. He put in the application for the Parrot Foundation, and he accepted three students, one of which is indeed working on Pearl. But the Pearl Foundation itself usually sets its own application in. Last year, we had a really good application. It was a lot of work by the community. We didn't get accepted because it's a really big program. There were many, basically when we asked them, they said, well, there were just many applicants. It's not that your application was terrible. This year, to be honest, we didn't have the energy. 
We really didn't. I mean, I contacted everyone who'd been involved. This is difficult. If you're a volunteer and you spent hours of your time trying to get into a program last year, and I write to you and say, hey, come try this GSOC thing again, it, it's tough. So this year we really did, and our volunteers really ran out of time. Earlier on in the year, people had talked about this program. So the outreach program for women was set up by the Gnome Foundation because they noticed that not that many women applied to GSOC. And they thought it would be a really good idea to have an internship program that really encouraged women to take part in open source. I thought it would be a fantastic idea to do it. And it is. It's a great idea. And we got funding for one intern. So we were able to find $5,000 for one intern. And I started working on the program. But because none of the people with experience in programs like GSOC could help me, <laughs> it was a lot of work. And it is. So all of these... Um, and I discovered how difficult it is to actually run a program that has hard deadlines that are outside my control. Whenever I found out that the volunteer who was supposed to run the program couldn't, it was two weeks before it started, and I was going to China on holiday on a boat. So I started trying to do this work because people were joking with me on a slow boat to China using satellite internet. It was interesting. Now, now that we have done the program once, if I can raise the money, I'm hoping we can continue to take part. Because this is a great program. We got um, four applications. Two of them were for Dancer. One was for Metacipan. And the one that was accepted was for Moose. All four women contributed to the project. We're still trying to encourage them to keep contributing to the project. Um, Opisana, who's working on Moose, is going to be working. I mean, it's for a period of three months for 40 hours a week. That's, that's a big contribution. And for that, she gets this internship of $5,000. And actually, one of the problems with the size of that time contribution is that all our projects are full of volunteers. And we don't have a strong set of mentors who have that amount of time to dedicate to a newcomer on their project. And that is something I'm hoping over the next year we can address. Um, Duke was saying yesterday about wanting to do something like the Google Summer of Code, you know, for Perl. Was he calling it Seasons of? Yeah. Yeah. He was talking about doing something like that. I would love us to do something like that, but for me the challenge is not necessarily going to be raising the money for it. It's going to be having rules and help for our mentors. You know, I wrote to lots of people in the community to ask for help with this program. And a lot of them got back and said, we would love to take part, but we don't have people with the time to deal with someone who's, sending, who's working 40 hours a week full time on our project. But I think we can improve on that. I think we can come up with some sort of educational program and some sort of, you know, that there has to be a way to encourage mentorship in the community. There really does. So I'm very hopeful that we can continue with this particular program. In the past year, so the Pearl Foundation is a whole set of committees. I know, it's all, it's all rather dull. So we have a conference committee, we have grants committees, we have a fundraising committee. If anybody's interested in joining the fundraising committee, because you remember I said I had 50 volunteers, do you know how many of them are on the fundraising committee? Can we guess? Well, there's me because our charter states <laughs> that a board member has to be on a committee, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't have any. We created the committee because um, I thought it would be a great idea. But obviously the feeling there as well is in us publicizing that we need more volunteers for some of these committees. I understand that. But, yes, yeah, so we have a fundraising committee. But our, Did you say it helped the fundraising before? Absolutely. So, uh, and the feeling. Oh, oh. <laughs> I have a lot of I know. <laughs> and there is no doubt that the feeling, because yes, Dave did say that, the feeling is within us and our management as well, because we are a set of volunteers. And sometimes instead of creating vision and doing new things, we spend all our time fighting fires and dealing with historic things. I mean, I spend a lot of time working on the Pearl Foundation. Um, I don't work full time, so I'm able to spend, I try to spend between 10 to 20 hours a week. But at times it's just not enough time. And I do spend an awful lot of time dealing with community issues, mediating arguments between people in various parts of our community. All things that you're probably not expecting me to do. <laughs> but my email is full of, you know, community issues. And that's fine. And actually, 
That's why we created, this is our newest committee. This is the Community Advocacy Committee, so someone else can deal with those community issues instead. And Yaakov has started to do that. Now his committee is very new. These are the, the goals that he has, and I can assure you that he has not got very far yet in achieving them. One of the things he's planning on doing over the next year is holding an event um, each quarter and to try and bring together members of the community to discuss community issues, not to discuss technical things. I mean, we already have quite a few workshops. There, the concept of encouraging leaders of pearl mongers groups and to actually just build bridges in the community. This is, I have had people get in touch with me. They talk about the pearl community. And I keep calling it the mythical pearl community because the pearl community, I live in Tokyo and Tokyo is the biggest city in the world by lots of different measures, but it is not a city. It's 23 cities all joined together. You know, it's got all its own cultures and all its own places to go to. There's no downtown Tokyo. And the pearl community is not just one huge agreeing group of people. It's many, many communities who all use pearl but who all have very different cultures and who all don't necessarily get on. So we don't even build bridges between our own communities. And I think it's quite important that we look at that and that's something that Yaakov wants to work on. He created his own logo because we have to have yet another onion. This is actually an onion flower I've been told. I've been told that the onion is not a very pretty logo, so he went for his own. Last year, for the first time, so the Pearl Foundation was created in the year 2000. And the first time we created anything professional in printing was this year. So we actually managed a professional end of year report. I have copies of it if anybody wants to see it. And we are hoping this year, we are currently working on a sponsorship perspective for fundraising, something that we've never had. So one of the issues, if you want to get involved in something like fundraising, because we don't do a lot of it, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know the best approach you should take. And I don't even have material to give you to take. So at the minute, we're working on creating these sorts of materials. And hopefully, you know, hopefully things will be better next year. And I'll be able to show you a sponsorship perspective. You can find out more about the foundation from our website and from our blog and from Twitter. Um, has anybody got any questions? Because we're almost out of time. Yes? I can't remember. One second. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not going anywhere. So the question is, what is your question? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Uh, do you use a CRM system? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? Funny question. CRM system. Mm, which for? For our website? Uh, just for, uh, <laughs> just for, like, uh, Civi, Civi CRM. No. Is that something you want to do? Oh, no, you do. You have donor.com. Yes, we've got donor.com now. Thank you. Because I was thinking, historically, we had something we ruled ourselves. Um, and it was kind of scary. But yes, at the minute, we're using donor.com. Yes. Oh, that's OK. I feel better now. I was thinking, did we ever implement that? We talked about that for years. <laughs> but yes, actually, Dan got that sorted out. Um, the Pearl Foundation runs uh, Yapsi North America, but we don't actually run the other Yapsis in the world. So YAPSI Europe is the YAPSI Europe Foundation, uh, the one in Japan, Japan Pearl Association. But actually, we've been contacted by a group of people in Australia. So it's possible that we're going to see a YAPSI Australia from this year on, which would be really good. But no other questions? You're all very quiet. OK, thank you.